Seis años. Ok. Pianist Richard Dowling is a native Texan who began his keyboard studies here in Houston at age five and went on to earn a bachelor's degree from the University of Houston's Moore School of Music. His further academic achievements include a master's degree from Yale School of Music and additional work at the Music Conservatory of Nice, France. Mr. Dowling made his orchestral debut at 18 when he performed a Beethoven concerto with the Fort Worth Chamber Symphony. Later career highlights include a sold-out New York orchestral debut at the Lincoln Center's Alice Tully Hall, and a solo performance at Carnegie Hall's Weill Recital Hall. Four years ago, Richard Dowling returned to his former hometown to establish a retail music store, and as an active participating musician himself, saw to it that the new facility included an intimate and acoustically refined performance space. Since then, Dowling Music has hosted frequent recitals by both local and visiting artists, including periodic appearances by the boss man himself. This weekend, Richard Dowling presents two performances of Zez Confrey and George Gershwin Rediscovered, a program of solo keyboard works, ragtime, early jazz, and music from the 1920s and 30s. And he's joined me here in the Geary Performance Studio for a preview of that recital. <laughs> Great way to start. That's uh, Zeth Confrey's Kitten on the Keys. And uh, I see a, a YouTube hit there, uh, you know, a cat dancing up and down the keyboard. And I should say, in fact, that we are streaming this session live uh, from the Geary Performance Studio on the Houston Public Radio YouTube channel. Just go to the uh, Houston Public Radio YouTube page and then click on the Feeds tab. And uh, you can see Richard in all his glory at the, uh, the Steinway here in the Geary Performance Studio. Richard, welcome back. Uh, this music from the 1920s and 30s, uh, the ragtime that we've just heard, for example, is a music that you have a long and deep love for. Yes. I mean, I grew up here in Texas. Uh, we were a three-piano family. I started taking lessons when I was in kindergarten on my aunt's old upright. And I guess by the time I was about 11 or 12, 
I demanded, I didn't ask, I demanded from my parents a grand piano. And so, uh, of course, my parents didn't want to spend a lot of money. So we went looking for a used grand piano and found one a lady was selling in her home. She also had a broken down uh, uh, upright player piano. Mm -hmm. And she threw that in for free if we'd carted it away with the grand. Oh, really? So um, one day the piano movers came and delivered two more pianos. And now we had three (laughs) pianos in our living room. My father and I uh, took the broken down player piano apart. My dad was an engineer at Texaco here in Bel Air. And uh, because he was a research scientist, he knew take a Polaroid picture of it as we take it apart Uh so we'll know how it goes back together. That was a very smart. Yeah. So I still have that player piano. I've collected thousands of rolls and I, I sort of learned that that this style of music through osmosis, just pumping that player piano from age eight to 18. Now, Zez Comfrey worked in the piano roll industry, didn't he? He did. He and Ann Gershwin both made part of their livings. Like all musicians, wear a lot of different hats to make a living. I've got my stores mm-hmm. and you know play both classical and, and, and pop jazz music. Um, they you know worked in the pits in Broadway shows. They went out to New Jersey to the player piano roll companies on the weekends and made player piano rolls. Confrey made, oh, probably about 150, maybe 200 rolls. Gershwin about the same number. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and these were just, you know, like they, they were the advent before records, you know, became hi-fi. And that was, and it was be- literally a, a, a roll with, with... Paper roll with holes, right. yeah. It's, it's vacuum-driven. Uh, there's still player pianos today, but they're controlled by a computer. Right. But the, the concept is the same. There's little fingers inside the, in, inside the piano that play the keys from underneath because each key on a piano is like a long seesaw. So you either play it at the front or you play it underneath at the back. It's the same difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the contraption that w- was designed in the 1910s and 20s is very elaborate, very elaborate. It was all vacuum-driven with pneumatic tubes, and little bellows, like like an air bellow you use in a fireplace to get a fire started. Imagine 88 of those connected to each key, <laughs> and they have a finger, and that's what plays the key from underneath. It, it was an ingenious contraption, the player piano. Talk a little bit about Zez Comfrey. Was he, he was a, a contemporary of, of Gershwin. Yes, they were three years apart. Uh, Comfrey was born in 1895, Gershwin born in 1898. They were friends. Um, they were also competitors, like musicians are today, like musicians have always been, Mozart and Salieri, mm-hmm. you know, down to today. Um, but they respected one another, and they came from different backgrounds. Um, Confrey was from Chicago, from a little town called Peru, outside of Chicago. And so he grew up in a little town environment. But he was classically trained, and he went to Chicago Musical College, where he got his bachelor's degree in classical piano. And then, of course, you know, this kind of music was the pop music. It was the rock and roll of of his day, of, of his day in mm-hmm. the 1900s and 1910s. So he started learning how to play it, you know, and, and playing private parties and got his own little orchestra together. And in his music, there is a lot of influence of the classical music of the time, which, of course, would have been that of Debussy and Ravel. That was the 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 big classical music of the turn of the century, at least from France. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's certainly, you know, the Viennese composers, but um, but a, a lot of his music, Zez Confrey's music, contains classical references, as does Gershwin's as well. Sure. And uh, I've spent a lot of time studying Confrey this past year. I just came out with a new book. One of the uh, other hats I wear is as a sheet music editor, and, of course, I sell my editions at my store, and they're for sale at other sheet music stores all over America. I have a new collection of 27 piano solo works of Confrey called Zez Confrey at the Piano. Hmm. And so I, it, a lot of the pieces have been out of print since the 1930s. Really? And they're really terrific pieces. And there's a lot of classical pieces in the collection as well, not, not necessarily ragtime. We just heard Kitten on the Keys. Um, what's the next piece that you're going to play for us by Confrey? Uh, it's called Della Robbia, which I think refers to an, a, an ancient Italian sculptor. I don't know what the connection is with Confrey. It's a nice, it's a nice title, and this is a kind of a later work, 1938. So he's uh, 
not quite so focused on the umpa anymore of ragtime, the thumping left hand. This is much more laid back and much more really jazzy. And it's just a beautiful, nice, nice little jazz piece. Well, here is Richard Dowling in the Geary Performance Studio with Zez Confrius Della Robia. And this is the front row. That is, that is laid back, isn't it? That was <laughs> Zez Confrius de la Robia, as performed by uh, Richard Dowling here in the Geary Performance Studio. From his uh, recital, Zez Confrey and George Gershwin rediscovered 1920s and 30s ragtime and early jazz, which he'll be performing twice this weekend at the Dowling Music Store. Let's get on to the next piece that we're going to hear by Zez Confrey. This is a novelette from The Three Little Oddities. What are the oddities? <laughs> well, this is uh, more in his classical vein. It has jazz chords in it, but the, the swing is kind of gone from it. And you can definitely hear the, the influence of the Impressionist composers Debussy and Ravel. Hmm. It's, just, it's just a short little impromptu type piece called Novelette. Well, here is Richard Dowling at the uh, Steinway here in the Geary Performance Studio. This is the front row.
novelette from Zez Confrey's Three Little Oddities, Richard Dowling at the piano. It's a nice little character piece there. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Introduce the last piece by Confrey that we're going to hear. This is called Jaywalk from 1927. Hilarious. This piece is so much fun to play. It's Confrey must have had a great sense of humor. Um, he was really a popular, he was probably the most popular jazz pianist in New York in the early 1920s. Um, and he was really a man of the day. He loved technology. So he had multiple player pianos. He got every new phonograph that, that was produced by Edison or others. He had a raccoon coat. He had a big Packard <laughs> automobile. Really? Yeah, there's a wonderful photograph of him standing in his raccoon coat with a huge smile on his face in front of this gigantic Packard. Um, I mean, he made money. He was doing very well with his jazz orchestra and just at the height of his career when Kitten on the Keys came out in 1921. So... To capitalize, you know, if you do one thing right, just keep doing it, exactly. right? Right. And and cash in on that popularity. So he wrote a uh, a bunch of solo piano works that are very similar to Kitten on the Keys, and this is one of those. It's called Jaywalk, and the title doesn't mean anything. It's just it's just for fun. Right. Um, but in the last strain, the next before the repeat of the opening, um, it's emulating a player piano. Oh, really? the, the three hands of a player piano. You'll hear the umpa accompaniment in the left hand and then a doodly thing in the right hand. And then at the same time, the thumb of the right hand plays an interior line. So it's like three hands playing at the same time. And it's just an ascending scale. It doesn't sound that great. It's just... <laughs> it's not the greatest tune ever written, but the, the effect is wonderful. And... It's hard, I have to say, but a lot of fun to play. Here we are. This is Confrey's Jaywalk, Richard Dowling at the piano. This is the front row. You got quite a workout there, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I don't have to go to the gym for a couple of days after Jaywalk. <laughs> Says Confrey's Jaywalk, Richard Dowling at the piano. <laughs> this um, music just makes you laugh. I mean, when you play it's it and when it? you listen to it, right. it's very infectious, you know? You're, you're also uh, showcasing George Gershwin on the recital as well. And I think we have time, if we're quick, to... You have uh, a, a reduced version right. of... Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. Right. I'll be playing the whole thing on Saturday night and Sunday afternoon, uh, but it lasts about 14 or 15 minutes. This is about three minutes, and I'm just hitting all the big themes in it just to sort of whet your appetite. It's a great piece of music, isn't it? It is. It is. And the link between Confrey and Gershwin is that on February 24th, 1924, they both appeared on the same program with Zez Confrey top billing because, really? of course, Gershwin was the junior citizen uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. 
uh, appearing on Paul Whiteman's jazz program, An Experiment in Modern Music at Aeolian Hall in New York. And Confrey was shown to be playing Kitten on the Keys, Nickel in the Slot, Dizzy Fingers, all pieces that I'll be playing. And then the, new, the end of the program was Gershwin's new jazz piano concerto premiere, Rhapsody in Blue. And the concert was such an enormous success that Paul Whiteman ran out the door the next morning straight to Carnegie Hall and booked Carnegie Hall two months later. And it was the first time that jazz music had ever been performed at Carnegie Thank Hall. You. Wonderful. Well, here is Richard Dowling's uh, abridged version of Rhapsody in Blue. This is the front row. Yeah, the unmistakable strains of, of Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue in a uh, abridged version yeah. performed there by... Uh, that was just Darling. a turbo prop for United <laughs> Airlines. That wasn't a full 777. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're performing this recital twice this weekend, but um, April 13th, you're also doing a recital of, of uh, music by Debussy. 
right. in when celebration I, of his 150th anniversary. I love the way you say it with your English accent because I'm just here to say to all Texans, it's not Debussy. That's what we stand <laughs> on the corner and wait for in New York is Debussy. It's Debussy, or if you want to be French or English, it's Debussy. Debussy. Mm -hmm. And, yes, it's called Around the World in 80 Minutes with Claude Debussy. And I'll be playing piano selections that refer to different countries of the world that Debussy visited either in person or through his imagination. And it's been a huge hit with audiences. I didn't think it would be. I thought it'd be too esoteric. It's been so much fun. I talk about the pieces, and it's, it's my imaginary cruise ship tour of the world with Debussy. Well, pianist Richard Dowling presents his solo recital. The Zez Confrey and George Gershwin rediscovered 1920s and 30s ragtime and early jazz in two performances, Saturday evening at 7.30 and Sunday afternoon at 2.30 in the recital room at Dowling Music on the Southwest Freeway near Kirby. Tickets that are available at the door. They can be purchased in advance by phone at 713-529-529. 2676 or online and you'll find the link to the Dowling Music website at thefrontrow.org Richard, thank you very much it's always a pleasure to have you here and uh, we uh, really have enjoyed Zez Confrey and George Gershwin Sinjin, it's always a pleasure, thank you Thank you also to Todd Hauslander our audio producer This is The Front Row <laughs>